Okay. Awesome. Oh, I just back and I yanked my headphones out of my ear. That doesn't sound very comfy. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Heyo! Welcome back to Akuma's Anonymous, where we discuss spoilers, episodes, and other pieces of miraculous ladybug news. I'll be your host today. I'm the Corn. I am the server owner of the Gibnat Book Club and Art Club. You can find me at Corinne underscore Prudenti underscore Art on Instagram and TikTok, at Corinne Prudenti on Twitter, and at Shadow Mayura on Tumblr. A fun fact about me is when I was 13 years old, I decided that it was a great idea to make a YouTube video of that little clip from Alice in Wonderland, the Tim Burton version, where Helena Bomb Carter just screams, OFF WITH HER HEAD! And I sped it up and I slowed it down and did like a bunch of other weird things to it in Windows Movie Maker, and I put that on the internet and it got 70,000 views, so I guess it was a good idea. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> Say hey, it's May. Hey! hey. That was adorable. I've been validated. Soul. Okay. I'm a mod on the GameNet Book Club and Art Club server. Oh, you can find me at Maybe Myra on Twitter, which I'm not there a lot, but that's fine. Tumblr, Instagram, and YouTube. A fun fact about me is that I am in my civilian life an architecture major, and it is destroying me from the inside out. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Um, you like, good I'm, there, I'm dear kidding. friend? Like I'm kidding, but I'm also not kidding, so it's Someone fine. Save me. <clears throat> What's up? I am Roni. I am a social media manager. You can find me at princess underscore nova, and that's n zero v a on Twitter. And that is really all I have so far. <laughs> A uh, fun fact about me is that I may or may not have spent like 20 minutes today screaming and happy stimming about the fact that a cosplay for my favorite pretty care character got released on the cosplay site I order from. Nice. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so all of us are members of the Game Nap Book Club and Art Club Diff Card Show. Uh-huh. Yep, totally. <laughs> all of <laughs> card server. <laughs> That's the vibe today. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> burn it. <laughs> All right. All of us are members of the Game Nav Book Club and Art Club Discord server where we celebrate fan works like fan art and fan fic featuring Gabriel Agrest and Natalie Sankar. I pronounced that wrong from Miraculous Ladybug. You can join us in the link in our description below. None of us can speak. <laughs> Yes. Hi, I'm Jared, 19, and I never learned to read or speak <laughs> or breathe. <laughs> anyway, if we can manage to get our tongues untied, we will be talking about our reactions to Furious Foo. Today, we'll be going through scene by scene, talking about our biggest impressions from the episode, starting with the very first scene, the scene with the Kwamis in Marinette's room, and then at the train station meeting Master Foo. Okay, I, I did find it interesting, um, like, with that scene where he was, with the painting, the painting, we had theories about the painting, mm -hmm. and uh, it wasn't confirmed as to what it was, but, like, Master Fu, at least in the subtitles, gave implications that it was, wasn't his line, like, it's what I think about when I think about you or something like that. Yes! That was so interesting to me. I was right about something, kind yeah. of. I think I think I said that last episode, like, it could One be his things. subconscious remembering bits and pieces, but not quite all mm -hmm. of it. Mm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, like, the rest of the commentary, actually, from him through the entire episode was, like, he never really said yes to Hawk Moth in terms of getting the miraculous. Like, I highly suspect that he isn't completely out in the memory department. Yeah. Well, I mean, mm. that kind of lines up with real life, to be fair. Yeah. And I really like that. It is yeah. sad, but, like, yeah. in, in the good way. It makes me wonder whether they're just trying to, like, add a bit of realism to it, or if it is some sort of foreshadowing for him remembering again. Like, one big thing in this episode, it it was, there was a significant scene later on about, um, you know, Guardians losing their memories when they renounce um, the Miracle Box. So, mm. it makes me wonder if there's, if they're going to discover a way to avoid that, or maybe if 
with time or through some other means you can get your memory back um mm-hmm. because that obviously is something that is a concern for Marinette yeah yeah <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that because it seems like um, the show is like taking some like easy outs and stuff like they put uh, Suhan down through trailers and stuff. They were like they implied that he was going to be a big old baddie and then they were like, yeah, he'll just give her back the miracle box and and stuff. So I feel like they would attempt to like undo that Mm -hmm. piece of lore that they've established, unfortunately. Um, (laughs) Also, I just noticed something. I'm looking through stuff when Marinette puts... um, ways back in the bag uh there's a motorcycle in the background with a little box on it and um you can see the top open and i'm pretty sure suhan is inside like peeking out in the same way that he did in the trash can except the box is not volumetrically large enough to hold him and i cannot get over this smartest technology (laughs) why does this keep coming back this doesn't seem like it should be a crossover but it is now it It totally is. is don't fight it (laughs) <laughs> what I want to know okay this frustrated me more than it probably should have Marinette makes a big point about y'all need to be quiet when she so nicely agrees to take all of the Kwamis with her and within two seconds they're singing they're going Master Fu Master Fu both in her room and at the train station and I'm just like why won't these little shits shut up y'all are pressing your luck little dudes did you just turn into Nino? my dude <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Bruh. Okay. I do find it interesting that like human holders have powers over Kwamis that they can't disobey. And it makes me wonder like what how the Kwamis view Marinette and like Marinette's like parenting skills essentially. Because <laughs> they didn't talk back to Master Fu in the same way that they appear to do with her. So I like yeah. I'm really interested in wondering about like the relationship dynamic and how she's handling that. And maybe that plays a, a role in some of her stress, as we know from like trailers that are currently coming out with terrifying frequency. <laughs> and <laughs> that intensity. She's, like, very stressed this season. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, if you had to parent what is it, sixteen beings that are thousands of years older than you and also having to do high school homework, I think I would be stressed. Mm. This really could be the episode that starts to introduce her issues with having authority or the mm. Kwame's issues with um, respecting her authority. I, if they go that route, it'll be interesting to see who the burden falls to. Like, will the show be trying to say that Marinette needs to step up and assert her authority, or will it be something more along the lines of the Kwamis need to move on and respect yeah. her authority? Which lesson are we trying to learn here? Yeah. It would it would match broader themes if it was about the Kwamis needing to learn to respect her, mm-hmm. um, to match that whole theme of moving on, letting go. You can't fight um, fate. And, well, maybe not, not fate, that's not the right word, but when, when things happen, you have, to, you have to accept them and let them go. You can't live in the past. Yeah. It is interesting, though, because the show, we, as we know, has a uh, tenuous idea of what a boundary is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, I wonder where they're going to go with that. Oh, also, Marinette has apparently never seen abstract art. <laughs> like Fu gives her the painting and she's like which way is this supposed to be held I'm oh like my oh. god <laughs> just because it's not some realistic piece doesn't mean it's not oh a good god. painting and she even says later on he's a good painter yeah. so I don't know why she's so confused in that moment She when she first receives it she's like I don't know how to hold it it's abstract art how have you <laughs> never gone your life without seeing abstract art you live in Paris you live near the Louvre <laughs> you're a designer you should know you should know <laughs> God, yeah. I am so happy that Fu has, like, been able to live his best retired life and, like, find yes. his passion. Like, he kind of, as much as, as many mixed feelings as I have about this man's, like, he kind of deserves a bit of a break. Yeah. True. Not saying Marinette should get the responsibility that an almost 200-year-old man has had 200 years dealing with, yeah. but, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, he should... Also, um, wasn't 
Uh, somebody was talking about earlier the fact that the translation said that um he and Marianne are married. Yes! And I just have a new OTP. I think it's that's so mentioned funny. in a later scene, but yeah, I, they are. I which just, is oh, I, 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 I'll cry immediately. Yeah. I'm so emotionally drained. I will cry immediately. Okay, move on. <laughs> I also have I also have conflicted feelings about Fu and mm-hmm. about his choices. Um, I actually, you know, I agree with Suhan on a lot of stuff yeah. um, about like children not being given miraculous. But then again, he's also part of the organization that decided mm-hmm. to yeah. put huge responsibility on children to guard the miraculous. So. There's a lot of weird things here, but I, I always have conflicting feelings because when I because when I sit back and I look at it, I'm like, man, Fu is not such a great person. <laughs> but then I see him like being happy and I'm happy anyway. Yeah. He's a nice person, but he's not like a great person, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He's a nice man. Like I like him on surface level, but uh beyond that, I'm like, eh, I don't agree with the choices that you were to some degree forced to deal with. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, guardians, troubled teen industry, but with magic. I mean, like to some degree, like Suhan <laughs> even mentions it, like how much guardian training he didn't get. Like I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he has no idea what the flip he's doing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's move on to that scene um, when Suhan uh, confronts Marinette in her bedroom, which. <laughs> Oh, already like yikes! <laughs> oh God. Um, let's see what else. He shows up in her. The bedroom. compass thing is cool. It is. I want her to have one herself. Like, like mm. now that everything has been established, let Marinette have her own guardian staff. Yes. Also, his page flipping skills. So. <laughs> Rule fifty-two. <laughs> Rule one hundred forty-three. <laughs> and there's a lot of fucking rules holy shit there are right rules that food does not know anything of no <laughs> that was interesting to find mm-hmm. out some of them seemed um obvious uh-huh like children shouldn't own a miraculous like yeah that uh-huh. that's yeah, no, pretty straightforward um i was surprised by some of the other ones like the guardian isn't supposed to wear miraculous. It makes me wonder how are the guardians even tied to the miraculous? And like, are they just supposed to keep people from using them if they don't use them themselves? I in that case, why not just destroy them or lock them away if if the goal is to stop everyone from using them? I saw mm-hmm. it as something of, like, a checks and balances thing. Like, it would be really easy to get drunk in power, I suppose, and uh, do more than you should if there's no check on you. So I see, like, mm-hmm. the, the Guardians as a sort of, like, curator role. Like, Fu does, like, hand miraculouses to people and make sure that they're being used correctly. And because they're not using one themselves, it's not like they're tempted to do the wrong thing. But... I mean, mm-hmm. it seems like Fu understood that part of that, other than the fact that he's like 187 and uh, just couldn't deal with ways and his uh, bones. But <laughs> sorry, uh, I think my secret is out. <laughs> I think my secret is out. I stole, Brody stole his fun. bones. Yes, for my long for. I, um, I had a thought. So my my theory goes hand in hand with his like miraculous related kung fu, whatever it was called. Oh. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but I know what you mean. He says that specific form of fighting is meant to be used against, like, rogue miraculous holders. I don't know how you're supposed to use it against rogue miraculous holders when they're using their powers, though. You'd think that it would account for that. Right. They were like, we can use this against any rogue miraculous holder unless they have the butterfly. Then we can't do it. Not today. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, right. That's a plot. They Hello, plot hole. (laughs) What else do you expect from this show? <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing about the Guardians is that they could be potentially in a protective role. Like, Fu warned Marinette against using too many mm. Miraculous and things like that. And this would put weight behind my theory that the Miraculous does things to your psyche. That Gabriel would be being affected by, as evidenced by his um, 
World War Three. <laughs> oh, oh God! No. <laughs> Uh, out of character there are two moments. wolves inside <laughs> me one wants this theory to be true so it can explain some things the other wants this theory to be false so i can just pretend that the new york special is not canon <laughs> <laughs> which wolf will win i don't know there are two wolves inside <laughs> me one wants the, that theory to be true so i can see suffering for the angst <laughs> And the other wants it to be true. So, uh... <laughs> shit makes sense. <laughs> so the wolves are allies. Different purposes, but same goal. Yeah, except they also just argue all the time. They're oh. enemies to allies to lovers. <laughs> 50k! <laughs> Two wolves 50K. inside me. Angst, they hurt, comfort, love. romance. Oh. There was only one bed. Oh, no! There was only one body. <laughs> 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 okay all right where have um, we gone <laughs> okay do i think yeah do we have anything else we want to bring up with that or it's still not over how creepy <laughs> <laughs> this man's oh i did appreciate the cute little easter egg of him like uh, on god with the with the computer um, because yeah. it also, like, from a storytelling perspective, it makes sense because then she later uses that against him. So, um, in terms of praising the writers for doing things well, that's one. Yeah. It's not to be like. But it, it was a properly used Chekhov's gun. Bang, bang, motherfuckers. Bang, bang. Mother. Shuckers. Mother Sh- shuckers. Mother shuckers. Okay. Born calls mother shuckers. So yeah, let's 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 keep going um, along those lines. Uh, rooftop scene where Suhan meets uh, Chat Noir. Oh God, I felt like Chat Noir's little rebellious moment was like a kind of a cheap trick because <laughs> that's like vaguely in character for Chat, like being um, uh, somewhat reckless and and stuff. But that moment just felt really forced to me. No, I agree with you. One thing that was interesting, and I only caught it um, on my third watch through, is that he actually legit said he would return the miraculous. Before the bit where um, Marinette pointed out that she would lose her memory, he was like, this is what you think is right. I'll give you up my miraculous. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't I don't know how to feel about that. I, it's a little bit scary that if Ladybug asked him to give her his miraculous, that he just would no questions asked right Especially since oh. it seems to be like one of the things that makes him most happy yeah i i almost see adrian chat noir as a bit self-sacrificing and stuff like in any of the places in his life he never plays a primary role he's always secondary to his father his mother his natalie his ladybug like i don't know if he knows how to be his own person and i hope yeah. he gets that chance over this season to learn how to do that cuz that's something from a personal growth standpoint that i that i would like him to have to live a happy yeah. life <laughs> yeah like him to stand up for himself at some point against someone yeah let our favorite cat boy have rights yeah, he's like stood up for um against like bullying and stuff before, but that's not the same yeah. as standing up for yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's still very self-sacrificing. That's probably why I like Adrian so much. <laughs> mm. Oops. Sorry. Are you okay, May? <laughs> Do you need help? Is there anyone I need to fight? No, you should just you can just fight like the inner folds of my brain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like, there's a reason that most of us who love Natalie love Adrian. Yeah, because that's something that they have in common. I've never actually made that connection before, which is really funky. That Adrian is pretty much just as self-sacrificing as her. Yeah, Adrian is Natalie, but with blonde hair. Too pure for this world. Yeah, the the visual parallel between the love square. And Gabe Nat is opposite from the emotional parallel. Like, Natalie seems to be designed to resemble Marinette. And obviously, Gabriel and Adrian resemble each other. They're father and son. 
I sure but, hope but I do. in terms of roles, it's swapped. Uh, yeah, the person who wears the pants, the tight spandex pants <laughs> that are red. Mm -hmm. Oh god, and okay, so Ladybug is red and so is Gabriel Agress, the two dominant people in these two relationships. Cat Noir wears black and so does Natalie, the two people. (laughs) Cat Noir and Natalie are both emo. (laughs) We not the conclusion that I thought was being made by this, but okay. (laughs) Um, But also the way that they respond to love and like not receiving the love that they want. Gabriel and Marinette, you know, they're the team leader who the sidekick essentially, obviously, I I don't say sidekick to diminish them, but like Ladybug and Hawk Moth are the primary members of each of their respective teams. So they're the leaders, they have the sidekicks in love with them, they don't return that love, or at least are not in touch with their feelings in that way. Um, (laughs) Both are pining for someone else on a somewhat obsessive level can't let it go obviously gabriel is the bigger extreme as the foil but it's there and both are kind of i would say like tortured by their love to a certain extent yeah like neither of them ever seem to just be happy to feel a certain way and to and to just live in that feeling and be okay with not having what they want and both Um, of them are fashion designers yeah, <laughs> unsatisfied with themselves and their designs 24-7. <laughs> Both of them are fashion designers and have literally no sense of fashion. Oh, God. <laughs> and, then, and then on the flip side with Adrian and Natalie, they both are kind of willing to just do what makes the other person happy. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, gone into the depths of meta in terms of character analysis and back. Oops. <laughs> Next scene, so uh, a very short scene. We won't have much to talk about here. But the next scene is the first look at Shadow Moth as he releases an Akuma. God, dumb Please face, man. Me. Move on. I have to say the costume doesn't look as bad in motion as it does from, like, the really short clips or the or the just, like, stills. Sad, no Natalie. I was hoping that we'd oh. get, like, a little glimpse, but it also makes sense that we don't. Yeah, really. Okay, so, like... So Akuma comes out, and then Marianne beats Suhan with her cane like an absolute legend. Dan, <laughs> this improved my um, perception of her character because there wasn't much before that, other than just like "love me, foo." But like, she's a badass old lady. Like, I like her. She's a spirited old woman. It would kind of be nice that if Fu continues to come back and make cameos, if Marianne can really actually take like lines of importance it would be nice for her to be to to continue in this way of being um more fleshed out than just his love interest give marianne a miraculous 2021 give me yes. a miraculous 2021 oh my God. Oh my God. not only do i want to see like some adult holders because they've established that like kids um like aren't as suited for a miraculous i would love to see like some destruction of like ageism stereotypes and like give an older person a miraculous yes tea that would be really yeah. cool i doubt it would happen but it would be really cool so i know what would she be if she had a miraculous Ooh. oh in the comments below what would marianne be if she had a miraculous yes please let us know. yes please i it's want so to cool. see everyone's opinions Okay, and then there's also what Suhan does when he's confronted with an Akuma. This is one of the most interesting things I find yes. about the lore. His like, little meditation moment. Yeah. This implies that not only does he know how the Butterfly Miraculous works, duh, he also knows what it's like when it's been used for evil. Mm. And how to recognize from a single McFlippin butterfly, I don't even know if butterflies existed, like... 200 years ago i'm kidding oh (laughs) butterflies sure butterflies were actually invented in 19 butterflies were invented (laughs) in 1999 (laughs) okay but anyway so like he's able to recognize this 
be used for evil and defend himself against it in a way that's more than just Marinette like standing on a toilet in a bathroom stall and going I'm Marinette so it is it is interesting that she has found a way to do the same thing even if it's yeah. not the proper way quote unquote also what the heck is in Fu's cane I still don't know what that whole thing is about. Suhan takes the cane, he opens the cane, and there's some, like, silver shiny thing in it, and then there's no follow-up whatsoever. I assumed it was one of the compass things, like, mm. that leads him to the box. He needed he needed a new guardian staff to um, lead him to the box. And remember, we got Fu's staff back out of feasts intestines, so, like, he could have theoretically put it into his cane... Um, and then, like, forgotten about it when he lost his memory. That makes sense. That's right, because beca- because they took Suhan's staff yeah. away. Yeah. They just never show the compass, which was the weird thing. Right. Like, I, I just don't understand why he never takes the staff out of the cane or, like, actually looks at the compass. <laughs> All right, do we want to move on yes. to that soccer field oh, scene? So many feelings. <laughs> they do play <laughs> soccer yes another oh thing that we were right about i was like that miracle box oh, is just what? begging to be punted it's Punt- just begging I'm gonna it. stop myself there <laughs> i love that that was a whole ass crack theory <laughs> and it turned out to be oh my like i if there's one thing that i will pride myself until the end of time of being correct about is just that <laughs> fair I love being right on crack theories, and for whatever reason, I seem to have a really good track record. Fix and canon combined, I think this is Wait, like my first correct crack theory, so hallelujah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, also, like, uh, <laughs> Cat Noir being, like, punting it into the net and just being like, go! It's go! so cute, but I feel so bad for him. I love him so I love much. Him. It's quite... it was I so really dumb, hate that I, I can't say it. the thing. What thing? It's just, like, I have the urge... <laughs> the phrase that Rain coined. Just say it once, get it out of your system. Punt that gun <laughs> into the sun! <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway... How many quacks Beautiful. are we at? How many quacks are we All at? of them are mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fu is powerful. He seems to be able to just give himself whatever power he wants. If I'm understanding correctly, that's what his power was. Like, he just wrote down whatever he wanted to do, and then he fucking did it. That's, like, to me, a hallmark of an episode where the Akumatized battle is not as important to the storyline. The Akuma, mm-hmm. like, has to have their powers explained really quickly and then just be like really powerful and then they fight for a while and then they go back to like mm-hmm. doing the storyline but um the more interesting yeah. thing about it for me was that how how much more similar uh Fu's and Su Han's fighting styles got and like knowledge and stuff. Mm. Um, like they started using the same sort of wind and thunder funky and fresh phrasing and they had they were on the same level in terms of speed like fu was actually better than suhan in the fact that he had that extra write it in it'll be real <laughs> fan fiction uh power furious fu with the power of fan fiction <laughs> i have the power of hot moth and fanfic on my side <laughs> But, uh, like, he was a really powerful villain, and he didn't get a lot of screen time. Yeah. And then Suhan just becomes a referee because he feels like it. Um, also, Suhan is a fucking coward. Oh, no! Honestly, how dare he tell Marinette that she's not a worthy guardian when he is literally hiding from an Akuma and letting children Your children, children aren't supposed to it. have miraculous as hides from an Akuma. Let's the children handle it. <laughs> Yeah, um, my opinion of his character went from, oh shit, new villain, to that guy is like, maybe a little bit okay, to, okay, you pineapple, and then it went to, oh, okay, he's kind of okay, but very cliche. Bye, see you later. Yeah. Not another 15 uh, I, I would not have used pineapple, but It was but the sure. first non-insult that came to my mind, and I'm kind of into it. I love that. I'm just disappointed that he turned out to be such a loser i would like i didn't need him to be a good person but i needed him to just not be a loser he should have either been really cool or really mean instead he's just a pineapple (laughs) instead he stole the comedy rights from cat noir (laughs) oh yeah 
Boo was funnier. Yes, Boo was so funny this episode. Do you wait? Do you want me to get the jingle bell from the wingless bat? Uh, see, see, that moment is definitely me going, oh, Fu is not completely memoryless. Like, add this to the painting, the fact that he didn't specifically say yes to stealing Ladybug and Cat Nora's miraculous. Um, the bell from the wingless bat is just too comedic to be mm. like, it, it, it's being it's being a little shit is essentially what it is. It's too funny what's not the, to be. What's in- the quack counter at? Actually. Oh, I don't know if we take out shit. <laughs> Well, I guess we might now. <laughs> That's a good point, though, because he can't be that dumb. Hawkmoth literally said, bring me the miraculous of Ladybug and Chat Noir. Yeah. The cat is literally in the name. Cat. He didn't say, bring me the miraculous of the Chauve Souris. He said, bring me the miraculous of the Chat. <laughs> 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 they don't even sound similar. Like in French, they don't sound similar. So there's no That's excuse. That's true. That's true. I just also love the fact that you offhand know the word for bat in French. <laughs> <laughs> okay, also, one of the other big reveals of this episode um, her costume changed when she got her lucky charm. Yeah. So this isn't the speed costume, even though she was definitely running, she wasn't any faster. Yeah. That surprised me. See, my crack theories are right. All of my serious theories are bullshit. Okay, but why just during the Lucky Charm? My thought was that it could be something that she unlocked from being Guardian. It could be something that is available to her now. But that's still kind of odd. How would she know how to do it? Unless, I guess, unless Tiki instructed her. But Sometimes it seems like the Kwamis don't know much more about the miraculous than the holders, so. And then, like, another thing that we don't know how she got in terms of, like, unlocking stuff guardian-wise is that little charm, which I now am pretty yeah. darn sure that charm is the thing that she gives the new B miraculous holder in that previous spoiler from our previous episode. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I'm guessing the new B holder gets akumatized. She gives her one of them, um, and then eventually she becomes the B holder or something like that. It seems like a huge boost for them Mm -hmm. in terms of an advantage. Right. So I'm kind of hoping that there's an equivalent boost on the other side. Hopefully, I I don't want it to be Shadow Moth. Um, I like the idea that being Shadow Moth is a detriment to him, but maybe power-ups? Yeah. I guess we'll find out. I, I think we'll learn more about this in the actual first episode of the series. Anything else we want to say about this scene? I did feel like Ladybug's Lucky Charm MacGyver solution to the problem was a little bit more convoluted than normal. And like, how fast is Marianne? <laughs> this old lady like sprinting. Or get this, Marianne is a time lord. Ah. <laughs> you know what? We'll just put the actual theme in. <laughs> What if it's not a crossover? What if it's, they've just been in the same universe the entire time and we just haven't known? I support it. <laughs> sure, X Files can be in there too. Okay, and then we have the very last scene of the episode. Suhan allows Ladybug to keep the miracle box. Uh, there's some interesting stuff in here. I think this is actually one of the most interesting scenes for me, lore wise. Interesting piece of information that the box that Marinette has is the quote unquote mother box. Yeah. Okay. With the most powerful jewels. I think that got mentioned before somewhere. Like, I don't remember where. I think it was implied in Feast, but I don't, I think this is the most explicitly it's been stated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that's what I hope we get more of, mm-hmm. is learning more about the box and its Kwamis and its guardians and, like, how yeah. badly or goodly they dealt with things. hmm I was frustrated because I feel like there's a middle ground, and I don't understand why we can't take the middle ground. There, There is a way to, to prevent Marinette from just having free reign over the box without having to straight up take it away from her and have her lose her memories like there can be a middle ground she can hold on to the box 
or or she could even she could even give the box to Suhan without renouncing the That's guardianship. True. Like there's mm-hmm. there, as far as I know, there's no rule that like the box can't be somewhere other than you. Like obviously she leaves her house and the box stays there. So why can't she give it a safe place to stay at someone else's place? Like Suhan can establish where he's living, where he's hiding out, and he can guard it with her still being the official guardian. Yeah. yeah yay for plot escalation like um sin counter for realism i guess yeah i just hate when things don't make sense for the sake of plot yeah. convenience right it, i feel like in that case why establish that children are not supposed to have the miraculous yeah. why establish that miraculous holders are supposed to be specifically selected there there are other there were other valid reasons that he wanted to take the box away so they could have done away with those two instead of abandoning those ideas entirely because if they're allies they should theoretically work together and reach some sort of compromise but instead what we're seeing is marinette continuing to do things exactly how she's doing and suhan just leaving <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and then there's the bit where she gives him shoes which i think is incredibly funny because uh how much time did she have to prepare said shoes <laughs> she just keeps them around just in case you they a were toeless mo- not a toeless um he has toes um <laughs> a toeless <laughs> monk apparently <laughs> okay that's it that's all Maybe they were um, Adrian's 47th birthday present or something. That's why she had them. She did research late one night. She was like, if a boy has this size feet right now and he's 15 years old and he's this tall, what size will his feet be in 15 years? His father is seven foot something. (laughs) His father is 12 feet tall. Plot twist, she just stole some of Gabriel's shoes. She just infiltrated his closet with his 37 pairs of red pants and, like, um, five pairs of polished white leather shoes. No, God. Yeah, and he just happened to have one pair of red sneakers. (laughs) Yes. And she took them. Well, also, uh, I think this is probably the last piece there is to talk about. Um, He says that he'll take the box back if she messes up so i kind of feel like that's gonna have some kind of consequence end of the season will that be a returning point we will see yeah so there's i wonder if we get a reveal say in this season just hypothetically um and Mm. it's not like um to cat noir or anything because Uh, or to her friends, will he count that as messing up? And also, I found it interesting that this episode, with all of his rules, and he never mentioned the fact that, and even seemed surprised, that she and Cat Noir don't know each other's identities. Yeah. That that was never a rule. So I'm wondering what the foo was going on in Mr. Foo's head when he made up that bit. (laughs) I still feel like it's a little bit early for the reveal. But we'll see. I mean, I think theoretically it it just it all depends on what happens with the other characters. Honestly, I will gauge whether we get a love square reveal this season based on what kind of progress Gabriel and Natalie make because they are parallels to each other. So if 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 mm-hmm. I if I really see Gabriel starting to doubt some things and strongly prioritize Natalie, I might start preparing myself for a love square reveal because I expect those two relationships to more or less match each other in terms of pacing. Any, any remaining thoughts on this episode or are we pretty much done? Still not over Suhan's eyebrows. That is all. And I swear, Corn, if you put his face over mine again, I will come find you. Um, if i have if i have one general impression from the episode um just disappointed about suhan yeah this is this is a storyline that could have gone on longer than a singular episode yeah that's true i can excuse it except for the fact that it was the first episode released of this season 
In some ways, I think the release order actually helped the perception of this episode, though, because like, it, it was it was very exciting. Uh, m- most of the exciting pieces were things that are probably actually established in the first episode of the season. I'm very intrigued in the new pieces of lore that they're bringing mm-hmm. in. There's a lot to be explained. There's a lot that can be springboarded off of. And I'm really interested yeah. to see um, how the writers navigate bringing in that new lore as well as how the plot line progresses with new lore. Yeah, the general takeaway is eyebrows stupid. <laughs> Lovely. And that's all of our topics for today. Join us next time as we break down spoilers for future episodes and specials. And if you enjoyed today's roundtable, Consider subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Ring that bell! Ding, ring ding, it! Ding, ding. Hit it hard! <laughs> ding, ding, ding! Make sure we don't get lost in the void that is YouTube. Smack that bell! Smack that bell like out of character Hogmoth smacking Cat Noir into the Eiffel Tower. No! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Sad French noises in the background. Anyway, to get more of the inside scoop, join us in the Game Now Book Club and Art Club server. Link is in the description below. This podcast was made possible by the Game Now Book Club and Art Club server. See? <laughs> Got three. Sweet double waifin. Take three. This podcast was made possible by the Game Math Book Club and Art Club server, Sleep Deprivation, My Current Hyperfixations, and support from subscribers like you. Thank you.